all the topics that you could ever try to attack Joe Rogan over. Why the fuck? Do you realize generation after generation how many millions of people we're talking about? Right, right. I'm, well, I'm not diminishing that, but you can also- <laughs> This was brutal. Holy, this is one of the only times I've ever felt bad for Benny Boy. I actually felt, I felt remorse for Benjamin. Jesus Christ. There's just something about in British people when they're not happy with you. Whew, yikes. Amazing. Yeah. I have a problem with due to my my hit my family history being like I know it's kind of a meme but mixed and this comes from when we look at affirmative but Tim, action isn't that identity politics you're saying your view on this is informed you're against identity politics as informed by your identity yeah it, it, it is what it is the ACLU when they supported affirmative action at Harvard which lumps all Asians Indian Chinese Laotians into one category and I find that offensive as an Asian person and so when but, I come out and say but Tim Tim that's an identity to, to say you should be able to argue whether it's offensive or not offensive right or not right without saying because you are part Asian you find like that's identity politics which you claim to be I against I no, I agree and I think I think the clarification <laughs> then I think what we're discovering here is that it's not so much the, the core idea of identity politics it's the application of in ways that either is reductive or authoritarian everything you're building here right now right do you want the government to tell you how to do all these things and all the regulations that you got to have your electric thing this far from this and like all well, the, the regulations like that for construction are important though. Man, I did. I don't know if I ever watched that Dave Rubin episode when he says, do you really want regulations for electricity? This is a guy that's never had to call in an electrician or look at some of the wiring in old busted ass houses where something goes wrong with one fucking outlet and all of a sudden your fucking house burns down or you've got some exposed wire and somebody touches it and gets blown the fuck across the room or some crazy shit. Like I, electrical regulations are very, 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 very fucking important. It's one of the reasons why like anytime somebody says like, oh, you know, my fucking uncle, my brother built this fucking thing outside. He's got electricity. Really? Are they in electrician? Did somebody come and check it out? Because that shit, if you fuck it up, is going to be really fucking bad, dog. Um, but I mean, we can pretend that none of that matters. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, is this the one where he brings up the post office? I think we watched this a long, long time ago, but... You do have to make sure that people don't do stupid shit. But make but sure you don't have a power line it's near a water line. You gotta, you, there's a lot of. But I would put most of that on the builders, though. They want to build things that are good. Now I get it. Oh, that's not true. Listen, people. No, cut, no, people are going to build corners all the time. Like you have to have regulations when it comes to construction methods, they, or people are going to get fucked. They cut regulate. They cut corners when there are regulations, anyway. They do. They would cut a lot more if there weren't regulations. I'm not totally... If you go to third world countries and look at construction methods, they're fucking dangerous. Yeah. That's why schools collapse on kids in foreign countries sometimes. Like, Well, I'm not complete... I'm not telling you that I'm against all regulation, period. Okay. That's where, But that's where I said intellectually I like that argument because you could make a... I think you can make a very sound argument that competition would force people to do better work. Like if you're a plumber, you have a vested interest in doing the best plumbing job you can so that people will rate you on Yelp so that you will get more oh, work. You don't you. have a vested interest in cutting corners. Now you- I, So people always learn about like free markets, but they don't learn all the parts of what makes a free market work. And it drives me fucking crazy because markets are, lefties get triggered, but markets are real. Markets are powerful and markets work. That is absolutely true. However, there are components to those things that need to be met for the market to function properly, right? One of these is some level of information. You need to be able to accurately assess the differences between competitors before making a choice. There is like, if you don't have that aspect, that is part of the market that's going to not really succeed that well. Another thing might be um, might be like frequency of which you visit a service or something. If you only get something like once every three or four fucking years and it's going to damage your ability to remember like if something was good or bad, like not everybody has like the same fucking family plumber or the same fucking, some people just like look into a fucking phone book, right? There's like, there's a million different things that will influence like whether or not a market is functioning perfectly. Um, you know, like I, I think that when you go to stores if there's something, I wonder if I can make a rule of thumb over this. If it's something that you can buy off the shelf of a store, the market is probably working well because you've got product A, you've got product B, you're showing up at a place that's selling you these things. It doesn't have a vested interest in pushing one. Then that's like a good choice that you can make. But if you're like calling a service and you don't really know much about it, if you're like reaching into the phone book and you're contacting small businesses, you don't know if these people are good or not. You have no fucking idea. If the guy fucks you over, and it's funny because like, and I'm trying to imagine the type of lives these people live. Like, you've never had, like, 
How many times, if you live in the Midwest, how many times have you ran through shitty fucking HVAC people, right? Or shitty people that come and they service your fucking furnace a million times and they never get it right. Or people that show up and do like a crappy fucking job with like some plumbing or some carpentry or some electrician or whatever. And you just go down the phone book and you do that, right? If a guy does a shitty job, right? Again, information is a really important component of a free market, you know? If Joe Schmo, the plumber, comes to your house and does a shitty job, you know, takes some shortcuts and fucks off, you're not gonna go on the internet and publish all these reviews. Nobody's gonna fucking know about that, right? No, like, you're not communicating, that information isn't being communicated to the market. So another schmuck can wander into this dude doing a shitty job and buy a services, you know, just as well. Like, nobody fucking knows. Um, these people are very correct when they say that free markets are real and powerful and they function, but they don't know that there are, pieces of information that have to be present for the market to function well. It's not just like, oh, boom, you can buy a service and now, boom, you've got a perfectly functioning, you know, free market. That's not the case. Um, ugh. Like, it's just annoying. I don't think that's the Midwest hacks. Are, well, sure, but if you live, like, in fucking Seattle, or if you live in, like, really far north, I don't know how often you get, like, an air conditioner or, whatever. Yeah, or a heater. I'm sorry. If you live very far south, um, I don't know how often you get like a heater check. That's why I use a Midwest example, but sure. Yeah. Might, right? You're going to push it as much as you can to save as much time and energy and money as you can. Mm -hmm. But once you go over that edge, yeah, you don't want to be known as the guy that the, you tighten something too much so that you flooded the house or when you're building a house. You're thinking that, that, logically though. When, when people fuck things up and short things and do things terrible, they're not thinking logically. But they're I don't think it's the government. Heads. I don't think it's the government that they're like, ah, the government gave me this regulation, so that's why I'm going to do it right. Well, if you they didn't I mean? have any regulations, there'd be no incentive whatsoever to do it right. No, there would be an incentive. They knew there I mean, like, the, it's just kind of not really true. I mean, like, you will try to cut corners, but based on what the regulations are, I, man, I can't generalize too much. I can't generalize too much from my carpet cleaning experience, but let me, let me, let me tell you, like, what a normal job might look like and what a hack job might look like and then what an insurance job might look like, okay? So let's say that we've got water damage, okay? If you've got water damage, there's three things, okay? There's three things that we could do, okay? Number one, we go downstairs. If the carpet's not too wet and I've got a couple fans on my truck and you look like a cheap ass, I'm not gonna bill you on a full water damage job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down with my fucking machine. I'm gonna vacuum the fucking water up down here. I'm gonna tell you, you should probably get all the padding torn out and replaced, maybe replace the carpet too. There's a whole bunch of other shit that you probably need to do too, but I'll leave two fans in here, maybe a dehumidifier if I've got it on my truck. I probably won't, probably remember. And I'm gonna charge you some rental fee for these for a couple days and we'll call it even Stevens, okay? You give me a few hundred bucks, we're good, fuck it, okay? Now, if I go to do like a proper job, right? We're gonna be cutting away, you know, a dry, we're gonna take a water meter, we're gonna push it on the wall, we're gonna cut away where the fucking, um, where any water or moisture is detected, we're gonna peel back all the carpet and loosen it, we're gonna remove all the fucking padding, we're gonna, you know, take our little hammer, we're gonna take off all the trim, or whatever, and then we're gonna leave, you know, some fans in here and a dehumidifier for a week and we're gonna build out. This is gonna be way more expensive, okay? Now, on an insurance job where the regulations are, right? I think that to some extent, and I'm, I might be generalizing here, but when insurance is involved, I think you usually you wanna meet those obligations because you get paid a lot of money for it. So on an insurance job, okay, we're gonna invent some bullshit about how important it is to have a vortex pattern of patterns, uh, a vortex pattern of fans down here, okay? We're gonna have fucking seven fans in your fucking basement. We're gonna have three dehumidifiers set up because we're gonna tell you it's important to drain the moisture immediately so that it's not hiding behind the walls. We're gonna cut 12 inches above any fucking water moisture detected in the wall so we can bill you for as much replacement, as much labor, as much trash as fucking possible, okay? We're probably gonna recommend you get your, all your carpet replaced. And the reason why we're doing this is because in Insurance is paying for it. So we bill out the ass on the insurance jobs. However, on an insurance job, your shit is gonna be 100% fixed. Your shit is probably gonna be fine here, unless you're really unlucky. Your shit is fucked here, but you're just trying to scrape by until you sell the house to some other sucker. But on an insurance job, your shit is gonna be dealt with 100%, 100%, but that's because the insurance is paying for it. So I mean like, I think the regulations can help to some extent. Like when there was insurance jobs involved, 
those jobs you went above and beyond because you can bill, you can line item every single motherfucking thing you you do. Every fan you're paying a daily fee for, every fucking square foot of carpet and 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 trash, every pound of trash we pull out, we're charging you for 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 disposal fees that gets just dumped in the dumpster behind our fucking uh, shop or whatever, right? Like all of that shit is being built. So I don't know the idea that like regulations mean nothing. I just I mean, like, if a regulation exists, and if you're held to, like, some standard, especially if insurance ever comes by to check out the job, like, it's gonna matter. I know for a fact that if you're cashing out insurance jobs for, like, weather damage as well, that shit's gonna be inspected by a third party, too. You're gonna have the adjuster come, uh, is it the adjuster? There's a name for somebody that comes out for the insurance, surveys the damage, you're gonna have somebody come out to re re replace it, and then you've got the insurance person that comes out again to verify that everything was done correctly before they release the funds for you sometimes. I know my aunt went through that whole process in Florida with hurricane damage. Um, yeah, the idea that, like, nobody cares about any regulations or nobody gives a fuck about any of that shit, I just, I don't think that's true all the time. It's possible in some cases, maybe that is the case, but, um, like, depending on what the regulations are and depending on who's cleaning up the, the, the picking up the tab for the job, and depending on who's looking into things, sometimes the um, sometimes the 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 regulations are pretty important. You know, like people will look over shit. And the most important thing about a regulation is there's going to be uh, there's going to be liability. Hold on. There's going to be liability involved if you fuck up. Because if there's no regulation and you fuck up, who cares? But if there is a regulation and you fuck up and somebody else catches you, well now you're liable for shit and you're gonna get fucked. You know. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. It's fucking dumb. This is dumb shit. There were no inspectors. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get out a drink real quick, hold on. <clears throat> oh, and also another thing. Your repeat customers are just gonna be easy jobs anyways. You're not getting repeat customers for like fucking water damage or huge shit like that, I guess. Or maybe it's possible you could. It's like the people that, the people that have like the biggest jobs probably do need regulations for shit like that. They, that would be my guess, general. but I'm generalizing a lot from my limited experience, so. Not true with insurance all the time. My family had pipe damage that we had to go to a third party because every company our insurance was calling out either never showed and tried to get paid or came in and told us that he had fixed it in 15 minutes and then he needed to dig for our hanging basement pipes. Sometimes insurance fixes can be as bad as the shitty jobs. If that's the case, you should call your insurance company and tell them. Um, for us, what it was always, I don't know if this is true or not, but what our boss always told us was that insurance jobs were by far your most important jobs because if you fuck those up, you might lose some types of insurance jobs. And those were your cash cows. If you fuck those jobs up, you will fuck yourself. Because if you aren't accepted by like certain insurance companies or people won't work with you anymore, you are absolutely fucked out of work. It is like the worst thing that could happen um, because those are some of your biggest like paying jobs and some of your highest margin jobs. Um, that's what we were told. Maybe that's not the same um, in all cases, but yeah. No one was going to check their stuff and make sure that their stuff was up to code. Listen, man, I was in no. construction my whole life. My dad was an architect. Yeah. I've been in construction since I was a little kid. You fucking need regulations. These guys, a lot of people that are in construction, they're, they'll do whatever the fuck they can to make money. And it's not good for the people that have the house because they might have that house for five, ten years before that problem manifests itself. Yep. Hillary Trump. Seems to me that you've, you bashed Hillary... Now you're trying to back off a little bit. Are you saying that Trump, an unknown quantity, is more dangerous than a known crook? So first of all, Dinesh, you keep calling her a crook, but you just got out of jail. Why don't, you should, let's, uh, let's give Dinesh a second. Why don't you tell us? I agree. So this is an important point. I agree. Give a second. So, uh, I agree. Just explain to us what what exactly happened with that. I just want to live on my land and be completely self-sufficient and not pay your taxes. After three years, the town would come, kick you off of your property, and seize your land. How would you know it's I your think, land? How would you prove that it's your land? Well, in theory, you would have a property deed. because that's Oh, God. Why do so many libertarian conversations feel like people just go through extra steps to reinvent government. Like all of it feels like that episode of, um, it's either Rick and Morty or a family guy or whatever, where they get rid of government and then they slowly bring back different bodies and then they just like, yeah. That's what happens when you buy property. Because the next question is who recognizes the property deeds or who issues the property deeds is gonna be from Cedar, right? Who would issue the is property deeds? Yeah. Well, right and then his response is gonna be, well, some central body that people kind of like trust, or you'd look to one person that would agree, that we would kind of agree to like issue deeds. Now there are governments that issue those things. And what I'm saying is, we're talking about the current paradigm of 
how could you own land? And there are things right now that exist. When you go buy land, you get a deed for the land. Right. If you're talking about what would happen in a free society, then there would be competing agencies probably that would issue such deeds. Which one would you're be asking the... me to centrally plan liberty, and that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in. Wait Sam, a second. I want to hear about that other paradigm. Right. Hold on, Sam. Hold on. Let me finish my thought, and if you keep trying to piss me off, I will disconnect from the call. So you're asking me to centrally plan liberty. I'm not interested in centrally planning liberty. I'm interested in promoting the idea of human freedom. Okay, so so wait a second. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, I think you absolutely did mean to upset me. <laughs> no, I... I think you absolutely do want to try to push me into a corner to where you can say, see, you don't have the answers of how freedom works. Damn it, Sam. Nobody has all the answers on how freedom well, works. I'm... That's why freedom is so important, because people should have the right to make decisions that other people might not agree with. That's well, why Darryl. I support freedom. That's why I love freedom. Well, Daryl, Because I... I'm smart enough to know that I don't know how to run your life. Mm -hmm. And I think the Democrats... They didn't, I don't think they tried to flip the result in 2016 for the most part. There were, there was a whole lot of the Hillary can still win stuff. And Hillary the, conceded the next day. But. It's absolutely not even remotely similar. Hey, that's me! Uh, it, it, it's remotely similar. Not, I would say it's maybe not Maybe like the, the way that thing. Antarctica is remotely close to like Pluto. Do you see the videos of celebrities <laughs> saying the Electoral College must vote for Hillary Clinton? Do you think there's a difference Well, I'm sorry, between, they didn't say that. They do you said, think there's a difference between celebrities saying something and the President of the United States trying to undermine the election? That's why I'm saying these aren't undermined? remotely similar. Yes, undermine. See, that's 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 framing. Well, it's when you say so. Legally in 2016, challenged. Trump said millions of illegals voted. He asserted that with no evidence. That's undermining the integrity of our election. And then in 2020, he's saying that there was widespread election fraud that literally no agency, no other credible person has backed up, save for the melting head of Giuliani. Like no one else is backing <laughs> up on this. His own DHS turned on him on this with his own appointee. Um, his own attorney general, the sword and shield. What did he say? Barr came out and said that as of right now, there is no evidence of widespread election fraud. If you look at the Second Amendment, True. the Second Amendment doesn't guarantee a right to own a warship, right? It doesn't guarantee a right to own a cannon. Even, even but hold on a second. One of the main tenets of those who are constitutionalists is that the Constitution only says what you can't do, and the Second Amendment doesn't say you can't own a warship. No, correct. No, the Second Amendment... No, that's, that, that, that is true. The Second Amendment They're doesn't negative. say that. They're negative. Right. So in other words, it's not actually, you're wrong on that. It's a very simple argument from my point of view, and that is that people, if they have the right to bear arms in order to prevent tyranny, then that, that goes for arms to prevent, that goes to the, the, the ultimate limit of that is the arms necessary to prevent, basically you can own any arm that is necessary to, <laughs> necessary. Not really to, to prevent tyranny. Well, this is Meaning good because in Waco, Texas, the, in Waco, Texas, in Waco, Texas, the government used tanks. Isn't it then reasonable to say people need tanks because they were used in Waco, Texas? Because this is the balance that we draw, right? And this is and this is true for all legislation. It's totally subjective, though, Ben. Totally subjective. The fact is that if you if you disarm a population of rifles, there is no chance that it could be a popular resistance to tyranny. Period. And, and if I, you if you only give them rifles and the tanks roll out, the rifles are useless. Right. Well, if you know, I'm not guys against that. the death penalty. I just want to say that. I'm, I'm against, so pro life. So you know, I'm against the death penalty. See? I love the death penalty. I'm not gonna, so you're not pro life. So you're not pro life. So you're not pro life. I love the death. So you're not pro life. No, I'm I'm pro life. No, but <laughs> I think I think the <laughs> exactly. oh, okay. I think the 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 Pro life and I'm also pro due process, which unfortunately one political party in this country so, 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 all right, guys, I'm going to step in here. I'm going to see the convention protections themselves. I'm going to step in here. This is going to be easy if he keeps walking right. right into the trap like that. <laughs> so, but another thing that we, we just wrote about, and again, people get mad with the Economics. weed issue. Well, no, no, traffic fatalities regarding marijuana have skyrocketed. Because <laughs> that's yeah. nonsense. No, you know, okay, but... <laughs> what, imagine walking into a guy's house and all over the fucking wall... He's got his, like, fucking Medal of Honor. 
He's got his grandfather's World War II memorabilia. <clears throat> He's got pictures of him and his buddy in a sandbox. He's got like a service weapon he was allowed to keep. I don't know if you're ever allowed to do that. And the guy's like, do you want to talk about something? And the topic that you decide to bring up is that people that serve in the military are just imperialist pigs. That is the equivalent of going onto Joe Rogan and trying to argue about marijuana. Of all the topics that you could ever try to attack Joe Rogan over, why the fuck would you do marijuana? It is such a stupid fucking idea. Joe Rogan is like the most... Joe Rogan wants fucking kids eating edibles in kindergarten. That's not true. But like, it's like the most extreme position that he will never back off of, of anything that he could ever defend. It will be marijuana to his death. I don't know why... Crowder must have either never seen an episode or had no idea what he's doing when he decided to go down the marijuana road in this episode. What a horrible idea. I'm going to step in here. This is going to be easy if he keeps walking right. right into the trap like that. <laughs> so, but another thing that we, we just wrote about, and again, people get mad with the economics. weed issue. Well, no, no, uh, traffic fatalities regarding marijuana have skyrocketed. Google that because that's yeah. nonsense. No, you know, okay, but there have been tests where they showed people. But that drunk, would go back to what he said and what you said. But there have been tests where they've shown people drunk versus on marijuana, and the people on marijuana drove far better. Okay, that's true. So this is also right? anecdotal. No, these are tests. It goes back to your point, right? Let's these say are someone, tests. Let's say someone has alcohol. Are in their these system. tests? The, well, I don't. I haven't read your test. Okay, so but why I, are you I, arguing against them? No, I'm saying I agreed with your point earlier. So why are you saying they're no, anecdotal? Let me, let me put the, well, it is anecdotal if you're saying some people drive better on marijuana no, than I'm alcohol. No, I'm not saying that. I've said there have been tests where they've shown that people drive so, better on marijuana anyway. than alcohol. That's if not you want, anecdotal. If you want, if my point is, if you no, want to smoke looking, weed, go ahead. No, you're looking to be really good at this argument here. No, 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 no I'm you not. You need to settle down. You said you wouldn't pile on, and you got two people. I'm not I don't know what people drive better, but they sure as fuck drive slower. I remember my um, one of our cooks, Randy, used to fucking bake so often. This guy was perpetually high. And I used to have to get rides to work with him sometimes, because I think back then we only had one car between me and Rachel. And this motherfucker is going 45 down the interstate <laughs> in the right lane the whole time. And he doesn't give a fuck. This guy was like always smiling. He was just like driving. I knew that if I needed a ride to work with this guy, I'd have to ask him like 30 minutes early. It was like, Randy, let's go. He's like, all right, man. And he's just like driving. He doesn't give a fuck. People would flip him off. And he'd like, this guy was super cute and everything. It was funny just because it was funny. Just like the people would drive by and he'd look and he'd be like, eh, whatever. He'd give him like a million dollar smile. They'd be like flipping him off, like speeding by. It was just really fucking funny. That's, I don't know if most people drive high like that, but that was my only experience of watching, of being with somebody that drove high. I'm not going to say I felt completely safe in the car, but we were only ever going like top speed, 45 miles an hour. So I was, if we got into an accident, at least I don't think I'd get like thrown, you know, or rolled over into like a fucking ditch or whatever. But Oh, yeah, 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 he's yeah, not talking. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's it not is. talking. He Actually, brought I have something a rule up. When someone he brought comes up on the facts. show, when someone comes on the show, Jared cannot well, interject. Congratulations, you're he not on the show. Interject. And all he did was pull up no, some no, fucking no. Two information. Two people bringing up information. Me without a laptop. No, he brought After it up. I, said, I talked no, no, about it. He didn't After even talk said, about it. You said, "What would be the one thing that you've changed your mind on?" Is there a problem when two people are correct and you're incorrect? Does that bother you? I don't agree that you're correct. What are you talking about? You just pulled up some statistics that show that Colorado has less traffic fatalities since 2000. Statistics. No, he did. You, had, you, well, you saw just said them. you. It's utilitarianism versus deontologism. That you, you, you're quantum. Oh God! Remember the rules, guys. Just don't ever introduce philosophy into debates. We don't need to. Fine versus I'm not. You see what I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying your philosophical standard is the minimization of harm, and mine is more about the individual is the small. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm curious about the second part of that. You said you know what I mean because I really don't. Oh, mine so is so minimizing. There's two. Arm, the, the, the two philosophies about feeling the in, uh, like violating the ethics of an individual is violating ethics regardless and yours is minimization of harm is better so utilitarian versus deontological from my standpoint committing yeah, one unethical I, act is a violation of principle and ethics that can't be crossed but i will admit there's not like a hard line it, it's, 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 is, you know. um i think that is silly to be honest with there, you I mean, I, I respect you, you know, but they're very strong philosophical uh, positions held well, by most I, people. I, that I, of... I believe that less suffering is better and that I am willing to... I'll, I'll, I will myself. tell you something you won't like to hear, though. I'm willing to the, sell the, you... myself if that, uh, that's the outcome. But, but I'll, I'll tell you something you're not going to want to hear, and, and I admit it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll call it dickish. Uh, utilitarianism is typically the villain in most movies. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so, so for instance, like Thanos was the was utilitarian and Captain America was deontological. 
I didn't. So do Thanos that. willing to reduce the suffering by killing, you know, hundreds of trillions versus the, you know, thousands of trillions, which would be living better off. There was a testimony before Congress from LA communities where black witnesses were going in saying, my kid applied to the local McDonald's, they wouldn't hire him because he didn't speak Spanish. It is mostly <laughs> black what? communities that what? are being overwhelmed with illegal immigrants and to be mocking them and saying they're afraid of Spanish people, I think is very dismissive and insulting. Well, here's what happens in this free, hold on. Here's but those soy claps you up. like the free market right you love the free market i love the free market as well as long as you don't have let me finish my point keep going, keep going. okay um in a free market uh of course there will be competition for certain jobs right and so the most skilled worker is likely to get that position being bilingual is a skill you're able to communicate and Oof. got him and I get it, if you're not bilingual, it makes you uncomfortable, you're not as competitive, but guess what? You know, we live in a country where you have all the resources at your fingertips, you can learn a language for free online. And so, enough with this victimhood, because I feel like there's a lot of victimhood coming from you right now, right? If you wanna compete for these jobs, go out there and learn. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps, learn a new language. There's nothing wrong with knowledge. Jesus Christ. But none of that matters because the climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child who is being exploited by her parents and by the international left. You. So what you're seeing here is a political movement and a religious movement, and it's uh, fulfilling uh, religious and political goals of the left, but it isn't doing very much for science. Chris, you had a visceral reaction to that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you're a grown man and you're attacking a child. Shame on you. She's trying I'm to not, do what I'm you think is, the left thinks is right. And by the way, now, right, relax, skinny boy. I got this, okay? You're attacking a child. You're a grown man. Have some coup. I'm not. I'm attacking okay, the left for exploiting television. a mentally I, maybe ill on, child. Maybe on, your, maybe on your podcast, you get away and say whatever you want because nobody's listening. You're on national I television. I don't know about this one. Be a grown up when you're talking about children. She's trying to save the planet because your president doesn't believe in climate change and kids need to take to the streets to worry about their future. You are despicable for talking to her about her like that. And you should apologize on national television right now. I think the, <laughs> I the know, international but... left and her parents I don't know about that one girl with many mental illnesses. You called her, her mentally ill. Mental Take it back now. She is Take mentally it ill. Back now. She is mentally ill. She has Take autism. She has obsessive compulsive disorder. She has selective you mutism. Are, she had you depression. You are despicable. Her mother wrote you about are... And that war was over in 1945. Civil war was over in 1865 and we are still at the effect of this underlying stuff that we we move on from one generation to another. Do, but so do you think you there's apologize, a... Do you, oh, yeah. sorry. Well, well, do you think there's a little bit of a risk in, in sort of... I mean, a couple of times you're referencing the genocide of the Jews to, to slavery. Seems like a little bit of a, a slippery slope there, no? I don't even know how we can say that, actually. And I say that as a Jew. <laughs> Have you read up much on slavery? Yeah. We're talking abject slavery, day. I mean, nobody's in a contest. Nobody has a monopoly on human suffering. This was abject slavery. Million, and also, if you started slavery in 1619 and you had two and a half years, two, two and a half centuries, and then at the end four, there were four to five million enslaved people, do you, do you realize generation after generation how many millions of people we're talking about? Right, right. I'm, well, I'm not diminishing <laughs> that, but you can also talk about the extermination of six million people and the amount of people that never lived because of that. That would be alive. Or your well, ancestors from, well, and from Russia who well, were never given anything and, and came here. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. But the Germans have paid reparations. That's kind of my point. The fact that Germany paid reparations. Germany has done full on mea culpa. Uh, it seems like everyone's kind of veering to some version of open borders. That that's somehow no, something kind of. No, so you say tell you're a Democrat. Where do you get this? Well, I don't stuff? consider. You say I'm a Democrat. 
Democrat. No, no, I don't no. consider myself a Democrat no, anymore. I, I don't consider heard, myself a Republican, but I'm definitely not, not a heard, Democrat. I have not heard one candidate. Well, like, they won't the say Democrat. it, but but the policies oh, seem so, to be. Oh, you don't say it, but you really, I mean, is, is, that, is that healthy, honorable debate? You say it if you believe it. I don't believe it. You can have well, healthy. No, I, I, I take them at their word. What has Trump done to make it easier for businesses to get going? By cutting back on so many rules and regulations that the Democrat had established. Like what? What's an example of such a such a, a rule? I don't have anything in mind right now. Yeah. But a lot of the rules and regulations that was preventing uh, 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 small businesses from beta. starting. Anybody yeah, think that uh, David away. sounds like a beta male here? Especially, I kind of do. About the great white hope. What would be? But so give me. Just I don't I know that there's dozens and dozens, but what's one such rule that was taken away that now makes it easier to start a business? Nothing come to mind right now. It, is there anything that you can remember even seeing at any time? Nothing come to mind. At Nothing. This time. Wow. No. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Your book is uh, a criticism of. Uh, oh, uh, man. This was I don't know if you ever watched this whole thing. It's like two minutes. He might have even included most of here. This was brutal. Holy, this is one of the only times I've ever felt bad for Benny Boy. I actually felt, I felt remorse for Benjamin. Jesus Christ. There's just something about fucking British people when they're not happy with you. Whew, yikes. Amazing. Yeah. Your book is uh, a criticism of uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm simply I have an to entire point list out, on my website, sir. Sir, on I'm, my list, I have an entire website of I'm, dumb, I'm bad things that I've said. I'm simply trying to point out some of the things you, you've said that seem to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to build, Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was list that includes, dumb? What? Yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only, but it is also important to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership, which, no. by the way, a BBC I've, I've seen is relatively reticent no. to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do and say, uh, you are correct about the slur and our Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. It's just Palestinians, you went on to say. No, it's, a, no, it's, and, a, no, and then it's you the said, ones who take sides and against Israel in the Israel-Palestinian Israel -Palestinian conflict. And the Palestinian population is rotten to the core, you went on to say. Not Hamas, I say by, the yeah, Palestinian I say by, Arab population. Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't, questions? I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've new, never heard of you. You, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank you well, so much. thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. We have to care about the environment. Oh, uh, it doesn't. That line doesn't make sense unless you see the full thing. Remind me tomorrow. We'll watch it. It was progress. And it's like, no, like we've been losing. America has been losing. And Donald Trump understood that in, in a way that I didn't. And I thought. You don't think we have to care about the environment? Like, what do you. <laughs> no, not even a little bit. Like, no. Not even a little bit? No. Do you, um, okay, let me, let me clarify this. I don't throw trash on the ground. Like, okay. I'm, I'm not saying, like, we need to, like, you know, trash the environment. Like, um, but do I believe in climate change? No. You don't believe in climate change? No. Well, I think the climate always changes, I guess is what I should say. Do I believe that this is like, you know, an issue that um, is being, that, that is fa global warming, which they've changed conveniently. They got you know what? You know what's so goddamn frustrating about Republicans? It's that real life is like League of Legends. It's not like StarCraft 2. In StarCraft 2, if there are shitty people out there, it doesn't matter because they don't affect your game. But in League, when you get shitty teammates, it sucks ass because they're going to bring you down and they're going to fuck your whole experience up and they'll ruin your fucking day. And unfortunately, in real life, you're on the same team as half the motherfuckers in this country that voted for Trump and you're stuck with them and they fuck your game up. They don't gank you when, they need, when you need them to, okay? They don't get vaccinated, all right? They don't care about climate change. They never ping when the enemy jungle or their lane is Mia. Fuck these guys. Let's go to Florida.
got rid of the word once scientists started disproving it. Now they only say cli climate change. Um, no, I, I think that that was just a way to extract dollars from Americans. I don't at all believe they had no actionable plan. It was great for Trump to get out of that deal. It was terrible. Okay, but this is an incredibly complicated subject. Right. And if you would have to talk to a bunch of different scientists right. and see how they gather data and see what they understand about CO2 levels and what's the danger of them right. and what can combat it and what could not. Have you done all this or no. do you so take I think this flippant opinion no, it's, based it's, listen, on the I'm party not, this line? Is not, this wouldn't be the hill I died on, right? But it's not about the party. I just genuinely, I, I've read a ton about it, but what I would not read? be able to, I would not be able to come to you and say like, this is my strong opinion, but here's like the easiest way to say this, right? Okay. The fact that there is a disparity in the science community about whether or not it's real is enough to... It's very little. Yep. Very little disparity. But, most, most, most scientists, most, the, the vast majority agree that human beings are negatively affecting climate change. Yeah. The vast majority. Yeah, I, I don't I just I just don't think so. What I'm trying to talk about is the totality of evidence that he has mishandled this pandemic. And it's interesting to me that you were extremely unwilling to criticize him for that. Because I what's can, what's the alternative? the alternative? What would have happened in any other circumstance where we have no we have no control group? What am I supposed to say? So, well, if wait, Trump how many would have backflip, how many how many would have had to have died before you would criticize him? I don't know. Well, give me we a don't number. Know. A mil wait, so you could have let a million? So what you're telling me is that we have no idea what would have happened if Trump did anything else. We don't and now ever. We're supposed we to don't. Make a determination. That's you're you're making a tautological statement. That's how the universe works. We don't right. ever know what would so happen if other things. What am I did. supposed to say when Fauci early we, on praised him? When governors early on praised him? Now they're critical of him in an election. Not. Year. Oh wait. Did, wait. Wait. First of all, the the praise of governors is irrelevant. Are governors health experts? Second of all, Fauci praised him a couple of times. He's also uh -huh. under a lot of political pressure to right. do what Trump says, or otherwise there's a very re decent chance of him getting canned. Uh, Fauci has made plenty of statements which Trump has later contradicted. Trump has been back and forth on the mask issue, going so far as to make fun of people I, for wearing I masks. I do not. You claim to have like this, um, a disaffected sort of like anti-establishment view of all of this, but you are, your channel is hyper-partisan against the left. And then when anyone criticizes Trump, you'll either defend him harshly or you'll back up and say, well, they're all bad. You are taking the choice to defend Trump. You are the partisan here. You're not a distanced anti-authoritarian. You are standing with him and you are saying, yes, I am anti-authoritarian, I am anti-establishment, but also we don't know if him lying to the American people was bad. It could have caused a panic. And as a general rule, Got him. I want you, David Pacman, as a small business owner, which you are with employees, to pay the least amount of taxes that you can so that you can hire more people, so that you can build a better studio, so that you can uh, invest more in your operation and bring the goodness that is you and your operation out there. I, dude. It's true of the right as well. It is true of the left and right. I'm gonna give you guys a tip. If you guys wanna be master debaters and you wanna wreck everybody, go start your own small business and for the first two years, do your own taxes. And you will quickly find out that everybody, everybody, every motherfucker lies when it comes to taxes. You wanna reinvest in your business? You wanna hire more employees? You wanna do all these things? Wow, well, like, guess what? Like, none of that shit is taxed. <laughs> If, if I hire employees and I pay people out, that shit, I don't get fucking taxed for that. That's paid as fucking wages, right? If I 1099 people, I don't pay taxes on that. That's fucking compensation for contractors, right? If I want to reinvest in my business and I want to buy some capital, that shit's a fucking write-off, chief. Like, unless you're complaining about fucking sales taxes or if you want to complain about FICA, if you want to, you want to ax Medicare, you want to get rid of Social Security, what the fuck taxes are you talking about? I would, I would just, and, and I saw this with Richard Wolf. Sorry if that upset some of you. I see this with all the lefties I debate, but with conservatives too. I caught that one little slimy fuck. I think he's in jail now. Um, that one, like the 19 year old hedge fund dude who was like, oh, Trump cut uh, capital gains rates at the top. You know, that helps a lot of middle class families. Motherfucker, you need $450,000 of capital gains income, of only income on investments. What are you talking? You're talking about a $4 million account that's generating 10%. Like, come on, dude. This isn't helping the average middle class America. What the fuck are you talking about? You just expect me to not know, like, the fucking brackets for this? Like, um, yeah, like, people, everybody lies about taxes. Nobody, Jacob Wool, yeah. Nobody knows anything about taxes. Nobody knows anything about, like, any, and they, people will make up taxes and they'll use them to, like, win arguments all the time without having any fucking idea, like, what the fuck they're talking about. God, it's so fucking annoying. Sorry. Okay, we need to finish this video. Two minutes. I know this as a small businessman now. If I had been- One exception to this, I think, I think is love him or hate him, 
I think Shkreli generally knew what he was talking about when it came to financial stuff. And he was one of the only people in this world. I saw him write a bit about the GME shit and I've seen him talk about generally. Now, when it comes to like real life, like work a normal job, he's brain dead. But when it comes to like finance and taxes, Shkreli seemed like he generally knew what he was talking about. Um, so that's like the one guy who like, it doesn't seem like he made a bunch of like dumb shit up or whatever. Being taxed higher right now, I had massive capital costs to build this studio and do all this stuff. I but a cap, man, I hope David Packman says it. Massive capital cost to build a studio. That's not tax, dog. You're, you're writing that shit off. You're not gonna pay taxes on a reinvestment into your business. By the way, I pay 100% of my employees' health insurance, 100%. I also give, uh, my director gets a, gets a cut of our YouTube rev. I do all the things, I try to put my beliefs into practice. But that's the uh, confusion and, and, for me, Dave, because it, those capital expenses are tax deductible. So thank if God. the tax rate goes up for you as an individual, if you've got pass-through income or for, for the business tax rate. Oh, oh, he used the word pass-through. So he's familiar with like LLC structures and everything. Uh-oh, oh no. It doesn't matter what the business tax rate if, is if you want to spend money on capital because the, you don't pay taxes on that. Actually, it encourages you to spend money on capital. Which is one of the only, you guys never make this when I complain about corporate taxes, but it's one of the only pro corporate tax arguments that I know of. And it's one of the reasons why I don't want the corporate tax totally abolished, maybe just slow it a little bit, is that corporate taxes do encourage a bit of reinvestment. If you make a ton of money, you don't do anything with it, well, you're gonna pay taxes on that. But if you reinvest it, if you hire more workers, like that's a write-off. That's considered an expensive the cost of doing business. That's 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 coming against your revenue. That's going to take off the net or earnings, right? You're you're not paying taxes on that. Um, it's one of the few arguments for the encouragement of uh, 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 for for having a corporate tax is that it encourages that reinvestment, that expansion, that growth. Built to have a higher tax rate. Um. So I under I understand what that argument is, and I would argue at the same time as that yeah. that having every one of us, every one of us, whether you, whether you, whatever, however much you earn, it is your money. Oh no, Sam Cedar, what a. So he goes to a totally different argument after. Whoa, well, oh, what a fucking nightmare! You, I had no idea this was going to happen. Do you Sam, think come on, your where's... audience yeah, cares yeah. that I only have a million subscribers and you have what, six or seven million I subscribers? Think, let me answer. Can I, I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Do you want me to answer, your, I question? answer your question? My audience would say Sam who? Just like Joe Rogan's audience and Ben well, Shapiro's and Dave Rubin. Now they all Rubin. know who I am. Now they all know who you are me. because you had to shoot on yourself and do another show. College students, every day that you do that, I change my mind. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Know who those this is another lie. Are? This is another lie. The let me, let me clarify, Sam. Let me clarify, Sam. The change my mind. Everyone knows on the show, right? Yes. We've had How professors. How did you know on the, I ended this my show early last talk. week, Stephen? If your audience because doesn't you're know an me, idiot, and half you know of that? your staff doesn't Do you like my you. Show? Let's debate, uh, Stephen. Don't hide behind the glass. Don't be a coward. Let's debate, Ethan. You've lost the All right. Debate the issues. What does it matter who you debate, coward? All right. Good. You guys are good. Thank you. Coward. You won't even take off the glasses. I was right. All right, yeah, you, you can, you can, can run yeah. away. This you is... run away twice, cold feet again. Come on, David. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Don't show book smarts, he's gonna get triggered. Wow. <laughs> Dude. God, he was so scared. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Do you have a favorite president? Yes. Uh, your mom. <laughs> Got him. God, that guy's so mad. He thought I was gonna give him a real answer. Mute me, 